Um, in this one, we're going to do a character rig for an animation that we're going to also do in another video that I roughed out, hand drawn, and we're going to use the puppet that we're building today to build the final animation. So it's going to be a mix of the hand drawn and the, the puppeting method. So right now I'm just sketching in the character based off of one of the key poses that I did for the animation. So here I'm just roughing out the hat and the hairdo. Along the way thinking about what's going to need to be separated. Definitely those antennas, they're going to have to be a secondary action. throwing in these legs and I'm just I'm just going for it I know later on I'm gonna have to adjust it I'm gonna tweak it a little bit but just going in there and not being afraid to mess up and just drawing I flip them upside down sometimes I'll just turn my head or flip the computer whatever I got to do um, if it looks good upside down then it means you probably got a good situation going on I'm using this ellipse to get a perfect circle for the head. It's just the way to go, especially with a character like this. Um, a lot of the cartoony big head characters will have very spherical heads. So instead of trying to get that perfect line and fudging over it for a long time, just use the ellipse and then, you know, because it's a vector, go in there, manipulate it and get it to how you want it to be. Same thing with these these eyes. Just use the ellipse tool, skew it, boom. And notice as I go along, I'm filling them in with white, just getting some kind of fill in there and turn them all into graphics and naming them just to keep track of everything. And as complex as these characters can get, you definitely want to have every possible thing separated into a graphic. That way, if you need to change something or if you need to, you know, swap it with something else. And what I'm doing here is I'm nesting the symbols. I'm selecting all of them and I'm turning the group of symbols into a graphic. It's called nesting. And I do that with the face. I call it the face scene. I do that with the head. I call that the head scene. And essentially, that allows me to animate just the face on its own timeline, then animate just the head on its own timeline. I'll definitely go more into that as we do the, uh, the animation. That'll be for another video. But right now, just, just get comfortable with making the different pieces of the character and thinking about what's going to be in front of what, separating the hair. This is going to allow me to, if I want to put a little, um, maybe like, three or four frame animation of the hair just, you know, wafting back and forth while he's running just to give it some life. I can do that. If it's a graphic, it'll have its own timeline. Making the antennas separate from the hat. Again, those are gonna blow in the wind as well. the bill of the hat. I mean, for this particular animation, we don't necessarily have to have it separate. Just definitely get in the swing of drawing everything into separate graphics and having those pieces. The hair, again, definitely needs to be separated. When you see the animation, you'll see the hair going back and forth. You'll see the uh, secondary action on there that needs to happen. He's made it a full piece. You never know. I might want to have a situation where he doesn't have the hat on at one point. So here I'm adjusting things. And you don't have to go exactly with your sketch. The sketch is just there to give you a foundation.
Here I'm throwing in that neck. And I always have the base of the neck a little wider than the top of the neck. You don't want to have just like that square rectangle tubey neck. It's, it doesn't look natural. For the top part of the arm, I make that, that whole shape is just all, it has a line around it. There's no break in the line. But for the lower arm, you'll see I do break that line at the elbow. You'll see how that's going to come into play when we start doing the animation. There's really no set rules for doing it, but I definitely, I break the bottom part of the arm. I call it the uh, arm bottom or the forearm. Again, you can name these whatever you want as long as they're all separated and you know it's easy for you to find them in the library. That's that's the main thing. Now moving on to this other side. I grabbed the artwork from the other side, but I'm manipulating it. I don't want to have an exact flip. It's not going to look natural, but you can definitely use that as a base and go in there and manipulate it. Just got to make sure you're not copying it and editing that because you're going to be editing the same instance of that other arm and it's going to change that other arm as well. So definitely break it, make it into artwork before you start manipulating it or you're going to have a situation on your hands. So far we have the head, neck, torso, top arm, bottom arm for both sides. Now we're doing the hips, which is a simple shape, but you definitely have to separate the hips. Top leg, again, don't break that line. Keep it just one solid shape with a line all the way around. And then the bottom leg, you want to break that top. Then the foot for this guy, fairly easy. Cartoony foot. Here we go, yeah, you can see it better now. I broke the bottom left part and the bottom right part. Now I'm just tweaking it a little bit. It's okay for that line to overlap a little bit. It's, you know, it wouldn't be super noticeable, but if you let it go too far out, it's gonna look weird. So, so I go in there and adjust it. Fixing the uh, t-shirt hole there, you know, making it so that it's fitting with the uh, three-quarter view a little better. And we're drawing these cute little hands. For the cartoon characters, the cartoony big head guys, I just give them four fingers. I mean, three fingers and a thumb, boom. You got a good situation right there. Once they start having too many fingers, even five fingers, it looks weird. Um, it's it's definitely cuter to have the, the four finger set up. And now I'm just going through one by one and selecting little bunches of the pieces and I'm just making sure that they're all single frame. And the only thing that you're gonna to wanna to have on loop is the head scene and the face scene. So anything that animates, you're gonna to wanna to have that on a loop. But we'll go more into that once I do the animation for it. Um, when we start the next video, I'll have this guy colored and we'll be ready to go.